Now, we all have our own tastes and our own uh, issues with different genres of art. My issues with portraiture are that they're always kind of a very straightforward shape, right? And not usually the most interesting composition. So with the addition of the hat, now these are just my digital painting ones. You can see all the hats building up nicely. Uh, that just makes the shapes a little, a little bit more interesting. And so do these rocks, right? At least in my opinion. So I'm going to merge these two rock layers together, which bring in some of the color. And then I can decide, you know, how to use them. I can sink them behind, have kind of surrealist rocks with his eyes. But I am now working on the title of Admiral Nelson as a pile of rocks. Or I can simply at this point take these rocks and composite them into the hat, right? So if I take this reference hat, which I will get rid of, but I can take my rock layer these composited watercolors that I played and layered the colors with my own. Whoops, I don't want to do that. And then I just duplicate them onto new layers with Command J. And then I can kind of build the hat out of them. And this might be fun. So you find a way to entertain yourself. Because there are so many portraits being done in so many painting classes. You want to have your own approach, your own reasons for doing it that keep you excited. And again, it's why we cover compositing early in the semester, because it can be an asset in all these other techniques, just knowing how to manipulate pixels. And I can warp and distort these things. I like it because these rocks as a hat will kind of look like a storm cloud over his head. Might give me new ideas. It's always good to customize, make it your own. And with digital art, unlike traditional painting, you can try things out and then see what it is without. You know, you're, nothing's a commitment, especially when you build it with different layers. Then that combined with my hat painting on top, starts to suggest the hat in a way that's interesting. A little gold peeking through. And then I think I need that, um, that crazy peacock pendant, you know, to sell it. So let me, let me just have fun doing a painting of that. So I'm going to move my reference all the way on top. And now, I'm just going to do direct painting, starting to steal colors from some of my other references again. Go up to a slightly higher opacity, just because I want to do it quick. And this will layer with my other kind of gray painted strokes. I'm going to take the texture out of my brush settings as well. So it's just a little bit more opaque. Actually, maybe I can limit it because I like a little bit of it. So 
So under texture with depth jitter, you can decide how much you want it to show. Because I was doing refined painting and kind of blending a lot, I probably overdid it. Now, if I just wanted to steal colors directly from the photo reference, I could use the mixer brush and just pull those colors as I go. But the problem is those colors are not my palette. They're not my choices. You know, they don't make sense for the way I want to paint. So that's why I pull from other references. And you're also trying to find your stroke, your way of making a mark, the direction you tend to go, the weight of your stroke, how heavy your hand is as it pulls away. In the history of painting, that became just as important as your drafting ability during the Romantic Age and then became kind of the signifier of different impressionists, different post-impressionists, what their individual brush strokes look like. And if it has any legacy in contemporary art, it's that the individual kind of telltale marks of your hand are not something to try to hide unless you don't like them. But it's not just about being like a, a camera. In fact, with the invention and introduction of photography, painting has been freed up to be more abstract, more personal in its style, because cameras can do the job of representing reality more reliably than highly technical painting can. So I'm going to take my little painting of this medallion, cut it out here. Put it at the top. And then I get to kind of mess with these things, right? And this is how I'm going to do that. I'm going to treat this all as a base painting, all of this kind of hat stuff I've done. I'm going to keep the rocks behind it, but all the hat stuff I've done, I'm going to merge, selecting it with Command-D. E. If you don't merge uh, layers you think are working, then you're just going to end up with a file that's huge, right? And then within one layer, I don't need to worry about erasing. And remember, I, I just don't really think you should erase in digital painting. I think you should just paint more. Correct your painting issues with more paint. Right. I'm take my opacity down a little bit as I start to soften some of these edges. When you do a refined painting with low opacity, in traditional painting, that's called glazing. So you're kind of covering everything with a single color, like I'm using these, these kind of brownish shadows. To get a sense of full spectrum into that hat, which is that very deep blue. And instead of erasing away the edge where it hits his
forehead, his brow, I just fix it with more paint. I can add the shadow. And at this point, I can even paint with white. So I'm not erasing, I'm actually painting. So if you see, if you're worried about that, I can turn on the gray and you can see the white I'm painting with, right? And that same white can be used as you're finishing off to lessen certain strokes. And what I'm trying to find here is a finish that I'm happy with. That, that I can bring to the rest of the painting. Doing a lot of holding down option and stealing colors. And I'm still just all working on one base, right? And what I have underneath it are these composited rocks. And I, it's always easy to sharpen at the end with a, an nice opaque brush. And I can always just build on a new layer as well. So you can see how that glazing works. Bringing a little of that sickly green into the other side of his face, because I think it's pretty successful over here. Into his forehead, maybe a little bit of this blue as a, as a drop shadow. And this is only at 36% opacity. I can use the blue line of my analytic sketch to kind of frame up the the front and back of this hat. Still a pretty big brush, not too zoomed in, but a lower opacity. Now at the edges, I'm going to go to higher opacity, smaller brush, get a little fussier with these greens. So I don't want it just to look cut out. And then with these little highlights, the pearls, the gems, I'll even go to bright white, just like the highlights in the eye. You can put them in and then you can always glaze over them slightly. And how it always works with digital painting and looking for your finish is it's kind of a mess until it kind of all suddenly comes together. So that's why you have to be playful in searching for it. It's, it's not something that you get rewarded by just working, working diligently, and then you put in the time and it will get there. There is kind of a work workman's process to digital painting, but that's for professionals that are kind of sick of painting yet another explosion on a film, right? We don't want to be uh, sick of it yet. You know, we want to be enjoying it. finding what you can bring to the process. And I think a lot about, about the, the kind of painting that happens in today's culture, 